I've got an ant weight that needs to be finished, and I've got a beetle weight that needs some upgrades because what I see at Norwalk Havoc is absolutely terrifying. But before I can do both of those things, I need a safe place where I can test the robots. So welcome everyone, I'm Jason, the captain of Team Rocker Robotics, and I'm standing in this old arena here. This is actually built from what we used to fight in at Motor City Massacre. Long story short, I ended up with that arena. You saw it about a year ago, kind of half together, when I was testing some weapons for Micro Flash Delta, my three pound combat robot, but now I want to actually make it safe-ish to fight in with ant weights. And that's what I'm doing today. So let's run through the things I'm going to do to complete this arena. Here's the first thing we gotta work on here. This is obviously the floor support. Here's one of the legs. And as you can see, the floor supports are held up purely with friction. I have the bolts going into the T-nuts, which are through the 80, 40, 80 something, another extruded aluminum here. And that's, it, it holds it up, but it's not really good. So what I wanna do is install some legs that go right here that'll actually physically support the weight of the floor supports. Now we're going to install these legs and you can see they're obviously a little bit shorter than where the floor was originally and that's basically just done the same material. <laughs> It'll work fine. Floor supports are in, so things are looking a lot better than what they were. Now I see a few things I can do to make them better. Put some anchors right down here, but like I said, right now it's a lot better than what it was. But there are more safety things to think about. This arena was originally designed to load the robots in from the top with some hinged doors that went up like that, which is all fine and dandy until, well, a robot catches on fire. <laughs> Also, if you saw a video a couple months ago where I built the inserts going to go in here, the sumo slash ant weight arena, it's actually sitting over there at the moment, um, that has pits in the side walls to let you push your opponents in there, which is also inconvenient to get them out if you got to load in and out of the top. So what I want to do is replace this panel here and the one back here with a door that can swing open at arena level. That'll make things easier, and also then, if a robot does catch fire, you can drag it out of the arena and dump it into a bucket of sand or whatever your fire prevention method is, which is something I have to figure out. All right, time for some more exciting footage of cutting pieces of aluminum. So somehow, despite years of building robots, in particular combat robots, I've avoided buying a tap and die kit and well, I kind of needed one for this project, so my solution was to go out to the big box store and buy the crappiest thing I could find. Hopefully it's going to hold up for, I think, eight threaded holes here. Of course, had I actually read the instructions on the package, I would have known to buy the correct size metric bolts. Well, one more tip of the store, I guess. So correction. This kit needs to last for 12 taps because somebody was more concerned about making sarcastic comments about the quality of their tools than paying attention to what they're actually doing. I gotta be honest with you guys, I've never seen more inefficient packaging than these things right here. One bolt and one T-nut in this giant plastic bag. Seriously? <laughs> so I managed to get myself in a bit of a pickle here. This eight by four by a half inch thick sheet of plywood here was the floor of the old Michigan Combat Robot Association organization, organization arena. It's the arena that I purchased and I've been building this one out of. And the smart thing would have been to cut this off in my garage where it was, but I'm like, nah, I can get it down in the basement. I can't get it down in the basement. <laughs> I made it about, 
got about nine feet in from the garage and realized I can't get it down between the size and how heavy it is. It's very awkward for one person to move. So now I gotta cut this thing roughly down right here. When you build projects like this, there's always something, something that's gonna make your life miserable. Now the inside dimensions of this box are 47 inches this way and 49 and a half this way. What well, shouldn't be an issue if your floor is built out of an 8x4 sheet of plywood, like the old Motor City um, arena was. The problem is with that arena, you've got those two pits that are actually 48 inches horizontally apart. So I don't have a section of board that's basically 49 inches long, <laughs> which means there's going to be tiny little gaps over here and over here which is clearly not a good thing. So what I'm gonna have to do, unless I wanna get more plywood, which I don't, and I kinda like to use that board because it looks cool, I'm gonna take some extra C channel I've got laying around here, cut it down so I can kind of, oops, do attach in over there like that, and that should patch the holes in the floor. So I debated whether I should actually drill the holes to hold the floor down now or later. And to be honest with you guys, I thought I would screw this step up. I never get things right in the first try and I kind of got this right on the first try. <laughs> All right, let's mark the holes, get this thing back out, drill some things and blah, blah, blah. You know the deal. The one thing in this arena I could never figure out was that no matter how I attach the hinges here, there's always a gap between the two pieces, which gaps are bad. Little things fly out of it and you know, you, you don't want that kind of stuff. So the simple solution is I'm going to put an aluminum plate back here that will go ahead and seal this gap up. Now this is an example as to why I was so excited that I got the floor correct just a little bit ago because I normally do crap like this. So first of all, I measured the position of these two pieces for the locks on one of the locks and then transferred them to the other, not paying attention to the orientation of the locks. So therefore this one here only sort of kind of fits when it's oriented like this where the lock position is up, which of course isn't good because that means the slightest bump is going to knock it out of the lock spot. Alternatively, I measure that position when there's a little bit of a gap between the door and the wall frame over here, which I since closed up, and now therefore the position I originally measured and transferred all three locks is wrong. Sometimes though, you do get dumb lucky, and here's another configuration that ignores the holes I drilled all together, and it should work good enough. I got two doors on this thing. Other one's nice and locked up at the moment. But now comes another fun part, because I've probably said several times now, now comes the fun part, because I say that a lot. A couple months ago, I built a sumo robot arena. It's been sitting in my basement just off camera over there. Now that thing has to get inside the box here. <sighs> That's going to be an adventure. a bunch of bull crap okay <laughs> a bunch of bull crap absolute bull crap so when i built this little inset arena thing last fall or whenever it was 
I built it to the interior dimensions of this arena, which were 47 by 49. The problem was, back then, the arena didn't have any doors on it. I was thinking of doing some sort of top lifting type situation, but I kind of decided against that for fire reasons. And the doors reduced about the effective area of the arena by a little over an inch. So we're now down to a little under 46 inches for the arena. The problem is this inset with the eighth inch polycarbonate kick guards is a hair over 46 inches. This thing no longer fits inside the box. Contrary to what it might seem from time to time in the show, I actually do have one of those fancy pieces of paper that say the word engineering on it. <laughs> and I probably should have used that skill when it came to building this arena. For you see, the panels back here that are used for the roof, for the original arena, they're one inch too short. And that's going to cost me about an extra $25 for more of this crap here. Also, this is the point where I realized I forgot I trashed all my metal cutting blades, my reciprocating saw. This is going to be fun. With that, this has been a heck of an adventure, but you know what time it is? Let's destroy some things. Come on, stand up there. That'll work. So yes, Microflash needs a fair bit of work, I'm not gonna lie, but that's gonna be another video. So that's it for today. Thank you guys all for watching. And just a quick recap here. Um, if you haven't got the basic gist of what's going on, this arena is built out of 80-20 one inch extruded aluminum with quarter inch polycarbonate. Um, while I feel safe testing Microflash in it, this is really an ant weight combat arena. Do not fight beetle weights in here. I assure you, quarter inch polycarbonate is not enough to stop beetle weights, let alone the monsters you see up in Norwalk. So take it for what it is. I'm not going to give you the details on how this arena is actually built because there are some issues that got to still work out, a few little gaps here and there. And I want to basically make sure it's safe before I start talking about what I really know what I'm doing because I basically reverse engineered this thing from the old arena into something new. So yeah. I'll just kind of, just keep it there. <laughs> All right, so soon I'll be heading over to finish on my ant weight. He's sitting over there. And just in case somebody asks, because they're going to wonder what I've got growing off the side over here, you've seen a couple of the videos. No, you can't smoke it. Well, I suppose you could try to smoke a ghost pepper. It probably would end very poorly for you, but it might get you some good views on YouTube. So anyway, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield and captain of Team Rocker Robotics. And now this is done, it's time to get back to some robot works in addition to, you know, Iron Man training. So, all right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.